Are you looking to adopt cloud to reduce delivery cycles, cut down total cost of ownership, bring operational efficiency, add new revenue streams, and go to market faster? Well, cloud helps achieve all of these and add significantly more value. Moving to cloud also helps inject organizational agility, enable innovation, and scale up or down as per your business demands. However, navigating the cloud chaos isn't that easy as one size doesn't fit all the organizations. At Mind, we help you every step of the way including planning, designing, building, migrating, running, and optimizing your cloud environment. Your search for a one-stop cloud partner ends with us. To know more about our comprehensive offerings such as managed services, migration, and modernization, among others, visit www.mind-infotech.com. So thank you, um, and welcome to our webinar um, today. So a few housekeeping rules for everyone. So everyone will be muted, uh, but please feel free to use the chat function, and the question function if you have any questions throughout this webinar, and we'll come back to those questions at the end of this webinar and, and answer as many as we can, time allowing. Uh, the webinar will be recorded, so, uh, and we will be distributing the recording to everyone on this event. So uh, I'm joined by some of my colleagues. So, um, so thank you for this joining this webinar, do more with less on AWS. My name is Sonny Koshal, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. I'm a senior sales consultant at Motherson Sumi and Design uh, in the UK, uh, Mind UK for short, and I'll be introducing you to our organization and our capabilities. Joining me today is uh, Chetan Krishna, who is a senior partner solutions architect at AWS, and Sora Barrow, the sales lead at Mind for AWS Cloud Services. So a little bit more about uh, my colleagues. Uh, Jethan has a wealth of experience working with FSI uh, and supply chain clients, building secure, scalable, and reliable architectures. In his current role, he works with strategic AWS partners, ensuring adoption of AWS best practices with clients. Saurabh leads our AWS cloud business globally and has over 13 years experience in FSI education and startups with a focus on bringing new products and services to the market. So to start off, we've got a quick poll. You will have 30 seconds uh, to make your selections. So um, appreciate any um, answers. Thank you. Right, so it seems that uh, the majority of the attendees on this call are either uh, using on-prem infrastructure for hosting or 
are already with AWS. So 40% already with AWS, 5% with uh, Azure, uh, no GCP users and um, someone using other. So great, thanks for your participation there. So um, next few slides, I'm gonna take you through our organization uh, and our capabilities. And then I'll be passing over to my colleagues to take you through some of the finer points around what, uh, what AWS can deliver uh, in terms of uh, delivering some cost op optimization for yourselves. Um, if you are using AWS, hey, can you uh, optimize further? Uh, and we've got a few um, webinar only offers that we're launching today, and you'll have access to the, those offers and our contact details will be displayed at the end of the webinar. So please stay right till the end um, so you can take up uh, some of these offers. So Motherson was formed in uh, 1975 as a partnership between a mother and a son, hence the name. Um, a relationship built on love, trust, and mutual respect, which we continue in all our relationships with our suppliers, partners, and clients. We have grown to become a Forbes 2000 company and one of the largest suppliers to the automotive industry. As a group, we operate in 270 facilities across 41 countries and have a strong team of professionals of 135,000 across Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, North and South America, with our current group revenues now exceeding uh, 11 billion US dollars. Oh, sorry, just jumped ahead there. Right, so Motherson uh, Group has, has been providing end-to-end -end solutions across a range of industries from automotive, logistics, aerospace, education, and healthcare. We have a heritage in product design, engineering, and IT services. Marston operates in nine business divisions, which continue to deliver value to their respective clients. These divisions are wiring harness, vision systems, modules and polymer products, technology and industrial solutions. This is where Mind resides as a business, metal products, retail, aerospace, logistics, healthcare, and medical devices. So introducing our mind, um, through our extensive portfolio of technology solutions and services, we have seamlessly delivered business transformation to over 270 clients across 41 countries. We have a 2000 plus strong team of professionals and are officially based in eight countries. We're helping business ex businesses accelerate technology led transformations and empowering our clients to reap the maximum benefits of innovative technology solutions. We offer a range of holistic solutions. So whether it's platform modernization, re-engineering and automating processes or gaining actionable insights from data, our solutions aid our clients achieving their digital transformation agendas. We are uniquely positioned. Uh, today we are serving large and medium-sized companies in automotive manufacturing, logistics, engineering, pharma, and aerospace to provide digital and, and analytics, cloud, industry 4.0, RPA, as well as RPA solutions. Sorry, our ERP solutions. We have a strong focus on innovation and a customer-centric approach using our domain expertise to provide customized digital experiences. We have a cloud first, automation first, and data first mindset. And we have a design led consultancy approach to solve complex business challenges for all our clients. Over the years, we have created an extensive knowledge base and a service blueprints to help our clients accelerate their technology adoptions. We facilitate seamless integration of technologies with cost predictability, as well as flexible financial constructs to meet our clients' needs. And lastly, we are among the early adopters of Industry 4.0 and digital engineering initiatives. These are, on, on this slide, you'll see a number of our partners, uh, key partners, um, where we partner some of the leading technology vendors globally um, in the market to provide our clients their business outcomes. So now, um, I'll be passing over to Saurabh, uh, who will take you over 
how migrating to AWS Cloud can aid in reducing your IT expenditure. Over to you, Sorry. Thank you. Thanks, Sorry. Uh, can I have a quick mic check? You hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you fine. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone, to uh, join us uh, this morning on the webinar. Really appreciate it. And again, uh, thanks for uh, you know uh, sharing your thoughts on the uh, the poll that we that we shared out. And Chetan, uh, my friend from AWS, would be smiling when he saw that most of you are already on AWS. So that's uh, great for us. Uh, Sonic, can you go to the next slide, please? Yes, thank you. So um, uh, as you can see from this slide, we have a deep and strong partnership with AWS, being an advanced consulting partner with multiple competencies, like uh, an, an audited and authorized managed services provider. Uh, we are an education competent partner, uh, DevOps competency, Windows workloads competency, and a few others. And on this slide, we're also uh, you know, proud to be uh, a certified AWS well architected review partner. And again, that's a beautiful uh, program where you think uh, Chetan, uh, who's going to speak after me, is going to talk a bit more about that. So we are a certified AWS board partner as well. Can you go on the next slide, please? Cool. All right. So um, as cloud technology has matured through the years, right? So cloud adoption has also increased very, very rapidly. And this, in turn, has accelerated the demands uh, from businesses to deliver our transformational solutions faster and more economical than before. For any business, this has become a necessity in order to compete or, you know, in, in some cases, uh, just to survive. Companies today must truly understand the value of cloud migration to support the business case for making such a, a bold move, right? And I'm sure many of you in the audience have asked your team to prepare such a business case, or probably you are making one yourself. In making this business case, uh, quantifying the benefits of a cloud migration that can help the business case immensely. Quantifying and benchmarking is one of the most valuable tools available today to organizations. Uh, the American Society of Quality, they put it really well about you know, quantifying and benchmarking, saying that benchmarking is defined as a process of measuring products, services, and processes against those of organizations known to be leaders in one or more aspects of their operations. Benchmarking provides necessary insights to help you understand how your organization compares to similar organizations, even if they are in a different uh, business or have a different group of customers. So to help customers and organization quickly quantify the, uh, the potential benefits of cloud uh, you know, adoption, Amazon Web Services commissioned a blind benchmarking study by the Omnicone Group. The study was done with over 1,000 AWS customers that migrated to AWS. The study focused on four areas, which you can see on the screen right now, and I'm going to cover them one by one. The first focus area was cost savings. So cost savings, they are often a high priority, if not the highest priority, when organizations initially consider cloud adoption. On-premise data centers, they require you know, large investments, uh, frequent hardware refresh cycles, and incur ongoing uh, costs such as cooling, uh, energy, and maintenance costs. Based on the study, customers achieved an average of 27% reduction in IT infra spend as compared to cloud. And that was the average, and it went to as high as 60% for certain customers. The second important area is staff productivity. So moving to cloud enables organizations to shift from a tactical to a more strategic task, right? And it dramatically scales their efforts down. So organizations can manage more virtual machines and greater volumes of data using the same or reduced staffing levels. In this study, in terms of staff productivity improvements, there were 147% improvement in staff productivity. And uh, when we talk about VMs managed per administrator, and 153 improvement in terms of terabytes managed per administrator. So again, you know, huge, huge uh, improvements in staff productivity. The next one, very important, is operation resilience. So these improvements enabled IT departments to deliver business critical services when users and processes needed them the most. 
AWS customers in the study, they saw a significant increase in operational resilience. On average, customers reduced the incidence by 25%, also a 31% drop in P1 or P0 incidents. There were also a drop in security incidents by 35%, and overall MTTR, which is a mean time to resolution, reduced by about 40%. All of this contribution in terms to, a, you know, added to an overall 56% reduction in application downtime. I repeat, 56% reduction in application downtime. The last uh, area of focus of the study was business agility. So businesses, uh, you know, the agility gains were universal among the customers in the study, regardless of the investment level, uh, regardless of their time on AWS, the number of users, and the AWS footprint. Customers saw a 37% reduction in time to market for new features, a 342% increase in core deployment frequency. I repeat, a 342% increase, percentage increase in core deployment frequency, and 30% reduction in time it takes to deploy new code. An organization that used Agile and DevOps on AWS hosted applications, they saw even higher gains. Can we go to the next slide, please? Perfect. All right. So this is again, you know, along similar lines. Yeah, yeah, right. Thanks. Yeah, on similar lines. So here is a summary of another re recent report done by IDC. This talks about the business value of AWS in optimizing costs. As you can see on my screen, uh, the list of all the tangible benefits the customers were able to realize on AWS. So things like cutting cost of operations by half, delivering three times as many features in the same amount of time, and 95% less time lost due to unplanned downtime. Again, so then. Uh, before I go into the next slide, so again, both of these studies, uh, they point in the same direction where, you know, you probably know uh, the, the world is going to. And again, this just, you know, um, backs up by actual data that has been presented. Can we go on the next slide, please? Thanks. Uh, based on the uh, hundreds of cloud engagements Mother Sun has had with multiple customers throughout the years, what did come out with a is, a is a cloud engagement plan, right? So this is this talks about the entire cloud journey of uh, probably every customer that is going to cloud, right? So it all steps. Uh, the first step is a cloud journey is the assessment. So this is where you know it, it goes from defining the strategy of cloud adoption uh, to creating of the roadmap and performing a readiness of the uh, cloud assessment. Step two is setting up of the foundation design where our cloud experts, uh, the design and implement the cloud framework by referring to the AWS well architected framework. So AWS well architected framework is, is you know, uh, the set of guidelines that is set by the AWS, which is the, which is the industry gold standard of how an architecture on cloud should be. So we as a partner, we follow all those guidelines to make sure the customers are you know, safe, they're secure, they're optimized on cloud. Then next two in this line are really important and critical are the actual migration, which can be done in a phased manner where you know, some customers prefer uh, you know, migrating some uh, less critical applications to cloud first and then move the rest applications or some customers actually prefer to do a big bang approach, right? So again, that depends on the size of the, of the migration, uh, the complexity and a few other factors. After the migration is completed, what we have is govern and run as part of our managed services offerings. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Great. Uh, so, I'm certain, you know, many of you in, in, in the webinar, you might be thinking why mind is a partner of choice for your AWS journey, right? So let me uh, leave you with just four reasons. Number one, mind uh, a 20 year old organization, mother son, 45 years old, we've done multiple large scale AWS migrations and successfully delivered is, you know, uh, more than just a lift and shift partner for you. So Mind is a strategic partner to its customers, and it is proud to deliver seamless services to its customers time and again in the last uh, decades, right? Secondly, Mind's DNA and its core strength 
lies around modern and next gen technologies like machine learning artificial intelligence iot right and this is super valuable to our customers and you know who have to be uh, future ready and my helps customers do exactly that third uh, pandemic or no pandemic you know the, the saying that a dollar saved is a dollar earned will remain true and mind stays on point with customers to proactively helps his customers optimize cost and that is not a one time thing right so this is something that is done regularly because anything on cloud it keeps changing so optimization has to be done you know every couple of months every you know six months or so so we help our customers uh, improve and fine tune throughout their entire journey of cloud so like they say you know cloud journey is a journey that that never has an end point right so you always trying to improve you always are trying to be better than you know what you had earlier so we help our customers do that lastly uh, mind is a part of an exclusive club of audited and authorized managed services provider of aws as an aws msp we build and deliver end to end business solutions on aws to help customers solve complex business needs at any stage of their cloud adoption journey with that i would like to thank you for being a fantastic audience uh, hand it over to um, sony or i think we've got one more slide right so about the uh, offerings we have for our participants so first we have another poll all so right the second sure, three poll sure. go for it Thanks. So you have the poll on your screen right now. Appreciate if you could uh, uh, select the most appropriate answer for uh, for you. Yeah, sort of. And in the meanwhile, uh, yeah, it was it was a very relevant point uh, that you mentioned about being uh, future ready. Uh, so yeah, moving to the cloud is not just about cost savings, right? Uh, it's it's being able to take your business to that next step doing the transformation and definitely ai ml and analytics right uh, they are the new frontiers most of our customers are looking at true true and again i think it's important to understand how you know you, they're just tools right so you do you use those tools uh, to uh, better come the business objectives all right so here we have the results of the poll and you know concerns around integration migration and uh, implementation seems to be the front runner with security compliance and uh, lack of in-house skills coming in uh, you know jointly second as concerns so thank you everyone for that um on to yeah son do, do you want to go next all right yeah. sorry yeah so um we have, uh, so as I mentioned at the start of um, this session, we have a number of offers that we're promoting uh, for the attendees of the webinar. So the first one is uh, a complementary proof of capability for a workload or an application that you may be looking to, um, to see if it's uh, viable for the cloud, uh, for AWS, um, and we're offering a, a complementary um, service there. We are also offering uh, up to 50% discount on CloudFront, so uh, AWS's content delivery network, um, a complimentary uh, well-architected review, we'll, which uh, Jethan will be covering uh, in his slides, um, and complimentary consultancy on uh, cost optimization. So typically on that uh, consultancy, we can come back to a, a prospective client within about 48 hours after some discussions around what we can possibly um, optimize and save you if you're an existing AWS user. So uh, Jethan, on that, over to yourself. Um, and uh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ani, and uh, thanks, uh, uh, thanks everyone uh, for being here and uh, really appreciate your time. And it's really great to see the enthusiasm and the interest in how to migrate to cloud and also on how to optimize your uh, workloads once on the cloud. And yeah, Sarab was right. Uh, I had a smile on my face when uh, uh, when I saw the percentages with 40% uh, for AWS. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised at uh, the amount of workloads that are still uh, still locked up in on-premise and data centers. Uh, there's, there's still, we are still in the beginning of the cloud era, right? There's, there's kind of a lot of, uh, 
workloads and uh, adventures to be still had on the cloud. So yeah, looking forward uh, for that. Uh, so uh, uh, before I start, uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Chetan. I work as a senior partner solution architect in uh, uh, AWS and uh, yeah, happy to be here. And uh, let me start by introducing uh, AWS. Uh, for those of you who are new to AWS or not, have not come across uh, Amazon Web Services as, uh, as we are known. Uh, AWS is a cloud service provider uh, with uh, hundreds of thousands of customers across the world. Uh, we have data centers across the globe um, and uh, specifically in Europe, uh, we have around uh, uh, six uh, regions uh, in Frankfurt, Ireland, uh, London, Milan, Paris, and Stockholm. Uh, and customers across all industries are taking advantage of, uh, of the benefits that, uh, that AWS has to provide. Uh, like AWS provides low cost uh, and uh, pay-as-you-go pricing uh, for IT infrastructure uh, on the cloud. Uh, what this enables is it enables our customers to experiment uh, without having to worry too much about upfront investment. Uh, AWS also enables agility right, and instant elasticity. Uh, you don't need to wait for hardware provisioning and you can instantly deploy and scale up and down uh, as you need it, right? And pay for only what you're uh, using. AWS is also open and flexible. Uh, it's language and the operating system agnostic. Uh, you can choose to bring almost any kind of workload uh, onto AWS uh, and uh, select the appropriate services that uh, suits your business. Uh, and finally, uh, the most important part, uh, AWS is secure uh, with a number of industry recognized compliance certificates. Uh, and the audits, right? Uh, so basically it kind of removes that overhead of worrying about security for you, uh, allowing you to focus on innovation uh, rather than infrastructure security. Next. Uh, so I'll, I'll be covering about a couple of things uh, in my talk today. Uh, so the first one is on uh, migration, uh, uh, the key success criteria for migration, and then I'll touch up on the optimization and well-architected framework. Uh, so right now we are talking about achieving migration and modernization success. Uh, so let's see how you can be successful in migrating to the cloud. I saw that in the poll, a lot of you had concerns on migration and integration. Uh, probably some of this would uh, help you address that. And uh, what I'm talking to is based on what we have learned from thousands of migrations uh, uh, that, that we have been part of. Uh, so probably that can help you make better decisions. Uh, we see that most successful customer transformations uh, usually exhibit one of these three key behaviors. Uh, first, uh, having an overall plan uh, for approaching your application portfolio, right? And uh, prioritizing certain applications uh, and how you would like to strategize that uh, migration to the cloud. Uh, secondly, as you use cloud more and more, uh, you start designing and building a new kind of operating model that confirms to the way of business uh, on the cloud, right? And this is something that our customers usually refer to as service management framework. And uh, finally, uh, our data analysis shows that where customers are uh, usually engaged with a consulting partner like mine. Customers usually see a 16%, uh, customers are usually more 16% more successful uh, in their migration attempts and usually achieve their results 25% faster, right? And that's that's a huge margin. Uh, so let's just uh, dive into each of these points uh, one by one. Uh, next. So first we look at the strategies for your application uh, portfolio, right? And how to uh, plan their migration to the cloud. Uh, the percentages that are indicated uh, or put in here are uh, indicative. Uh, this is based on what we generally see and have experienced with uh, other customers. And uh, these percentages might uh, vary for you. Uh, first of all, many customers are realizing that as they uh, look at their portfolio and start preparing their plan for migration, uh, there might be some older apps uh, that, that do not kind of cater well to their future business model, uh, which can be retired, right? That usually makes up about 10% of their applications. And uh, secondly, there are around, uh, uh, I mean, now there are thousands of SaaS vendors available on the cloud, which probably was not there five or seven years ago. Uh, so a number of your on-premise applications, you can actually very easily find the equivalent uh, SaaS provider uh, who can manage the overhead of that particular application for you, uh, providing that application as a service. Uh, most large customers have landed on Salesforce as a CRM, right? Uh, that's, that's one of the examples that I can say. But a lot of the other services like firewall and uh, uh, many of the applications, business applications that you can think of are available as SaaS applications, right? So you can very well kind of retire them and move on to a SaaS based solution on the cloud. The next strategy uh, includes uh, making decision to lift and shift uh, where you move your VM. Uh, you have a VM on your premise and then you move that same VM onto the cloud. And uh, during the move, uh, you can also decide that uh, you would like to re-platform some of your uh, components like operating system and database uh, to reduce costs. And uh, here is where we see more and more customers uh, trying to re-platform from uh, 
uh, operating systems like Windows uh, to Linux uh, to overcome the licensing charges. And uh, from Oracle and Postgre from Oracle to uh, uh, open source solutions like Postgres, Aurora, and uh, MySQL, right? Uh, to again reduce the commercial database uh, licensing costs. And uh, finally, uh, you, you can also choose to modernize uh, some of your applications. Uh, when we say modernize, it's basically using cloud native technologies like uh, containers and uh, serverless uh, and using architecture patterns like microservices architecture pattern. Right? Uh, however, the key lesson that we have learned uh, from our other customers is uh, try to modernize the applications uh, which are really a key differentiator for your business. Right? Uh, try to focus on them. And we see transformation and modernization get uh, applied to at least 20% of the portfolio over time. Right. And some of them is done by in-house IT teams and uh, uh, or engaged with an outsourced uh, partner like mine. Next. And once your workloads are there in the cloud, uh, there are three kinds of operating model uh, that you can choose from. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's not just either one of them. It, it can be a combination of uh, one or more of them as well. Uh, you can either self-manage uh, your uh, uh, infrastructure on the cloud. Uh, AWS does provide a lot of management and governance services uh, for you for managing the end-to-end -end IT lifecycle. But this does require upskilling your teams, uh, requires having that kind of a, a skill level that needs to be maintained within your organization. Uh, and with this, you can manage both AWS as well as non-AWS resources. Uh, the second option is to use uh, AWS managed services. Uh, so this is a 24 bar 7 managed service support uh, uh, that provides out-of-the-box cloud operating model uh, for our customers. Uh, they provide ongoing management, cost optimization, and operations of your cloud infrastructure. This leaves your team free to focus on your applications in the cloud. Uh, and finally, uh, and also most importantly, you can also choose to uh, uh, use a partner. Uh, we have over 100 uh, managed service uh, providers uh, uh, who provide uh, full lifecycle services uh, for your cloud operations. Uh, these MSP partners are qualified through a rigorous MSP certification process that AWS conducts. Uh, and they're audited by uh, third party for uh, compliance as well. And uh, engaging these kind of uh, partners uh, also helps you to be future ready. Uh, like uh, Saurabh mentioned, uh, they bring to the table other competences as well, like analytics, AI, ML, uh, which you can start, uh, which they can uh, kind of guide your business on how exactly to take advantage of those uh, uh, solutions as well. Uh, and of course, you can use multiple of these options uh, that we provide in here, uh, which best fits your need. Next. And uh, finally, uh, why involve a partner? Uh, so first and foremost, like I already mentioned, our data shows that uh, uh, using a consulting partner, uh, uh, customers usually see that migration is done 25% faster. Uh, and this is primarily because uh, uh, partners bring a, a huge uh, uh, experience uh, along with them, right? Uh, and as our uh, Amazon CTO usually says, uh, uh, there is no compression algorithm for uh, experience, right? Uh, so we encourage our customers most of the time to benefit from the experience of our partners uh, who have been through this number of times before. And uh, their experience gets the customer to the desired business outcomes much faster. Uh, they address your skill gaps, right? And the consulting partners also bring in uh, uh, tools, expertise, and uh, implement compliance guardrails, uh, compliance guardrails, guardrails uh, that are uh, specific to your industry, right? So if you have any kind of a regulatory or a security kind of a requirement, I saw that that was also one of the uh, key concerning areas that uh, a lot of the customers are looking at. Uh, so uh, th this kind of frees you up again, right? Uh, to innovate on your business and build your skills and uh, uh, the things that you really want to develop for your business. Next. So now that we have seen how to migrate to the cloud and what are the key business drivers or uh, key uh, uh, success factors for migrating to the cloud, uh, let's move on to see how you can optimize your workload once you're on the cloud. Uh, so we'll start with the key tool of AWS Well Architected and uh, uh, what it is, how it can help you, right? Uh, so, uh, I mean, the key question that uh, that we'd like to ask our customers uh, uh, is, uh, are you well architected, right? Uh, do you have systems, uh, You uh, some of you, 40% of you are already present on the cloud. Uh, so how confident are you that your systems are built and operating following the best practices? And hopefully most of you would say yes, that it's, it's built as per the best practices and you're pretty confident about it. Uh, and of course, all of us have great people in our team and I'm sure that we are uh, uh, we are ensuring that, right? Uh, but this is a changing landscape, right? Uh, in terms of security, in terms of the technology, right? So this, this always keeps uh, moving. Uh, well Architected is uh, created by AWS uh, to drive better outcomes for our customers uh, who build and operate workloads on the cloud. It's, it's more than a tool. Uh, it's, it's a mechanism for our customers' cloud journey and also for risk mitigation. 
Uh, well architected uh, helps you to learn the best practices uh, to be on the cloud, uh, including the strategies to achieve those best practices. Uh, it also provides you a set of questions to measure your architecture consistently against the best practices. And finally, it provides you a mechanism uh, to also track high risk issues and improve on those, right? Uh, supported by uh, either AWS or uh, internal teams or partners. Next. So the AWS well-architected uh, framework, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a set of design principles, uh, white papers, uh, it has a tooling behind it, right? And there's a huge program that has been established behind it as well, right? Uh, so primarily it provides you a set of questions uh, and uh, design principles across these five pillars, right? Uh, so these kind of form, form the core foundation uh, of any uh, well-architected system. So when you incorporate these pillars, uh, it will help you produce stable and efficient systems, uh, allowing you to focus on uh, your functional requirements. Uh, so the first one is operational ex uh, excellence. Uh, so this pillar uh, 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 looks at your ability to run and monitor systems uh, on the cloud. Uh, the second one is security. So it uh, it looks at uh, enabling you to uh, protect your information systems and assets uh, while delivering the business values. The next one is reliability, uh, which basically uh, uh, work towards having a fault tolerant system and how you can recover from infrastructure or service failures. The next one is performance efficiency, right? This is the ability to use uh, uh, the vast amount of computing resources efficiently to meet your business requirements. And uh, finally, we have cost optimization, right? Which is which we see is a really a key factor for most of our customers. Uh, this is the ability to avoid or eliminate unneeded cost at, uh, for our uh, using suboptimal resources. Uh, next slide. So what does the review process itself involve, right? Uh, so as part of the review uh, process, uh, you identify a workload uh, that you would like to get reviewed. Uh, a workload is usually defined as a collection of uh, interrelated applications uh, uh, or infrastructure or uh, a set of operate business operations uh, that, that you would like to review. And then you prepare for the review. You get your architecture uh, diagrams together. You get uh, the business priorities together. And then you have a session with a solution architect to review this architecture uh, based on those objective questions that has been designed for the five pillars. And once those uh, questions are answered, uh, there is a particular tool, well-architected tool, uh, which also identifies the risk factors, right? Uh, it comes up with a, a clean report at the end of the day, uh, which tells you how many high risk items that you probably have uh, on the cloud uh, that needs to be looked at. It also shows you any kind of a medium or a low risk items as well that needs to be addressed. And finally, you come up with a plan uh, to fix the high risk issues and you can involve uh, uh, partners again to uh, uh, fix those high risk issues for you. Uh, so you're, you're ensure that you're mitigating any kind of risks on the cloud. Uh, next one. So let's drill, uh, go a little bit deeper uh, into the cost optimization part of it, uh, the cost optimization pillar. So it is one of the five pillars and uh, one, one that the session is kind of focusing on. Uh, and our approach on cost optimization is, uh, is really about customer obsession, right? And uh, uh, AWS is always looking at ways to save uh, money for our customers. It's, it's part of AWS DNA as well. And uh, according to us, cost optimization is not just looking at your AWS bill uh, and seeing where you can reduce uh, dollars and cents, uh, but it's about measuring and understanding uh, the value that your resources are providing to your workloads, right? Uh, uh, or to your business. Uh, a workload does not cost optimized if it, is, if it has a very low bill, but it's not really generating any business value, right? And technology exists to serve the needs of the business. So cost optimization exists to, de to do this as efficiently as possible. And these are the design principles uh, for cost optimization as per the well-architected principle. Uh, the primary one is uh, create a team, of, uh, a cloud financial management team uh, that is responsible for establishing and maintaining cost. Uh, if you're not sure how to do this, uh, of course, you can always reach out to AWS or your partner to identify how exactly you can go about uh, doing this as well. So the team usually requires people from finance, uh, technology and business rules who can identify and prioritize uh, uh, what is really relevant uh, and agree on a set of financial objectives and align the goals accordingly. We provide a number of tools uh, uh, for both the finance teams, the business owners uh, uh, to make use of here. Uh, the second one is to adopt the consumption model. Uh, so pay only for what you use, right? That's, that's one of the key selling point of the cloud. Uh, so as and when your uh, requirement increases or decreases, uh, uh, your uh, bill should ideally uh, reflect that as well, uh, right? And you should not be relying on any kind of uh, elaborate forecasting. Uh, the third one is to measure the overall efficiency. Uh, this is again a key part of it. Uh, so like I said, it's it's not just about cutting the cost. It's, it's also about uh, looking from the end-to-end -end process perspective, right? Uh, 
so measure the business output of the workload and the cost associated with delivering it. Uh, use this measure to know how the gains you make from increasing output uh, and reducing cost. Uh, the next one is stop uh, doing undifferentiated heavy, heavy lifting, right? Uh, so stop uh, spending money on uh, uh, your DBS trying to do backups of your database. Uh, that's, that's not an efficient use of the time. Uh, instead, they could be working on some kind of innovative solutions or data modeling uh, for your business uh, rather than working on these kind of uh, mundane jobs, which can be easily automated or uh, uh, managed by a partner, right? Uh, these, these are not your core competency, right? Uh, so why do you want to do that undifferentiated heavy lifting? Uh, so you save a lot on the operational overhead. Uh, in the same time, uh, you're also able to reinvest uh, those resources more effectively in other areas of your business. Uh, the, and, and finally, uh, analyze and attribute expenditure, right? Uh, so this is, this is again a very key and uh, uh, hugely beneficial aspect of the cloud. Uh, the cloud makes it easier for you to accurately identify and the usage and cost of your systems. Uh, it then allows you to transparently attribute IT costs to individual workload owners, uh, either it's environments or departments or uh, business owners, and it helps you to measure the return on investment, right? Which is which is a very key aspect of it. Uh, this gives the workload owners an opportunity to optimize their resources and uh, reduce costs as well. The next one. So those were the design principles. And as and when we see the customers uh, on uh, onboarding on the journey of cost optimization, uh, 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 we see that these are the uh, four stages uh, that uh, that is usually works best. Uh, so optimizing your uh, costs on the AWS can allow you to do more for less, right? So that's, that's the whole idea. So cost optimization is more than just cost savings. Uh, it, it enables your organization to be more agile and uh, meet customer needs. And you can use the savings to reinvest back into your uh, organization. So there are four stages uh, of cost optimization, uh, see, plan, uh, run, and save. So completing each of them uh, allows you to see the maximum benefit, right? Uh, uh, we provide you a, a bunch of tools uh, in each of these areas uh, to look at and uh, make use of them. Uh, so in the C stage, uh, it usually focuses on getting real time and granular visibility on your cloud spend, right? And for this, we have tools like cost allocation tags, uh, AWS cost explorer, and cost and uh, usage report. So the cost allocation tags basically allow you to tag each and every resource telling to which project it belongs, which business unit it belongs, who's the business owner for it, right? So when you see your final bill, uh, you can individually attribute to say how much is your production environment costing, how much is a particular department costing, right? So uh, you, you remove all the ambiguity and you can actually pinpoint to uh, the exact cost that can be allocated and attributed to each of the uh, uh, cost centers, right? As well as the cost explorer and the cost, cost, cost and usage report, uh, gives you granular data at an hourly basis or even a second basis if you want to see how exactly your instances are being used. Uh, the plan phase is about looking ahead, right? So it's planning forward, uh, setting the expectation and on how much your projects and workloads will cost, right? And uh, you can also build in mechanisms to alert you whenever there are cost overruns. So there are two main things involved in planning. Uh, you define your KPS for your business, like what is the spend that you want on each of your environment or each of your workload or project. And then you set budget thresholds for them, right? Uh, you set up alerts, alerting mechanisms. Uh, so you get to know, uh, even from a forecasting perspective, if you're going to overrun a particular budget for a project or something like that. The run phase is for implementing programmatic control and governance, right? Uh, so you have added your visibility, you have done your planning. Uh, the next phase is to ensure that uh, the actions that are being taken on the cloud are properly controlled, right? Uh, so this deals with uh, management and governance uh, over resource creation as well as billing at scale. Uh, so we provide services like AWS Billing Dashboard uh, where you can look at granular uh, uh, service level details, uh, right? As well as we provide secure governance uh, controls with organizations and IAM uh, where you can decide who can launch what kind of a uh, resource on the cloud, uh, what kind of a spend each and every uh, person, respond, person uh, using the cloud is responsible for. And the final one is the save part of it. So this is where you take all the learnings and everything that you have and take control of the costs and uh, continuously optimize, right? So we'll see uh, uh, some of the options for this uh, next. So once the fundamentals are set with the first three stages, uh, we move on to the key stage of cost optimization. Uh, so this involves the saving part of it, right? So this involves three key things. Uh, one is selecting the right pricing model. And on AWS, we have multiple pricing models, whether you can do a pay as you go, or you can get a discounted uh, pricing with reserved instances. Uh, 
uh, or you can also get uh, preemptible instances with spot instances, right? At, at up to 90% of uh, discount over there. Uh, the next one that you would look at is matching capacity with demand, right? Uh, you would decide how you want to scale your resources as and when the demand comes in. Uh, you never want to see a flat curve for your pricing, right? Uh, you want your uh, cost to match with the usage, right? Uh, so that is where match capacity with demand comes into play. Uh, you can use uh, AWS Instance Scheduler uh, to terminate idle instances, uh, uh, ensure that when something is not being used, uh, you're not really paying for it. And finally, uh, simplifying and optimizing the resource selection. Uh, for this, we offer multiple tools on AWS, like Trusted Advisor, which gives you advice on what kind of instances that you're using, or if the instance that you're using is not being used optimally, right? Uh, uh, if, if you're not having 100% utilization on the server, it would probably give you a recommendation to downsize it, right? Uh, uh, similarly, we have other services like Compute Optimizer, uh, which helps you to optimize compute capacity by recommending the right sizing of your instances. And finally, the Cost Explorer. It helps you to, again, uh, uh, identify where your spending is going on, right? And uh, what are the costs that you can further reduce by better architectures. Next one. So these are some of the customer uh, references. I uh, specifically selected them for your geography uh, who are optimizing on cloud. Uh, so ITV, uh, uh, a media customer who saves close to $150,000 in compute cost by using uh, EC2 uh, on EKS uh, with spot instances. Uh, so they reduced up to 60% of their costs by using spot instances. Uh, similarly, we have Arcadia uh, who helps deliver healthcare uh, solution. Uh, so with uh, application modernization, they were able to uh, drive down costs by up to $20,000 in monthly saving. Uh, they also basically use spot instances in order to reduce those costs. Uh, and finally, the EasyJet one. Uh, so AWS again enabled EasyJet to handle more than a uh, uh, million bookings uh, per hour uh, while optimizing costs and creating better experience for the 90 million plus uh, users. Uh, I've given the links for the case studies as well. Uh, you can obviously go in uh, deep dive and see how exactly the customers achieved them, uh, or you can reach out to us for any additional information. Uh, so that, that ends my talk and uh, yeah, thanks. Over to you, Sunny. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Jetan. Um, so uh, we had the uh, last of our polls. So um, if you could please take the next thirty seconds to answer, would be much appreciated. Thanks. Okay, seems to be quite an even spread um, reviewing of workloads uh, quarterly or after a major release being the kind of two predominant ones. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so um, coming to nearly the end, um, I'd like to pass back over to Saurabh, um, who will take us through some of our fixed price migration and managed service offerings that we're launching in the UK. Over to you, Saurabh. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much. And th thanks, Chetan, for a very interesting uh, uh, and, uh, insightful session and you know, naming some of the customers uh, there in the UK that you've know, been working with. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so uh, as part of the webinar, you know, we are actually uh, taking this opportunity since we have all of you uh, here to launch what we call our, our fixed service offerings, right? So, so these are two uh, major offerings. A lot of our customers, they come to us and say, you know what? what kind of a cost am I looking at initially, right? So to do something like a migration. So the, the first uh, uh, fixed cost offering that we have here is for your you know, standard migrating from the existing on-prem to AWS. So what we've done is that we've actually, uh, on, on the left-hand side, as you can see, you know, there are multiple variables that are involved in any migration, right? So this can go from the number of virtual machines, uh, the site, the database, uh, the number of databases, uh, the, the type of database, uh, the source data center, where you migrated from one data center or from multiple data centers. And we've actually, uh, you know, broken them down into these four categories, right? So you've got a small, medium, large enterprise 
migration. And again, based on this, what you can see is, let's say if you are looking for a migration to cloud, you can have a look and see where does your workload fit? Do you fit in the medium or the large or somewhere between a medium and large? So you will get the kind of cost that you're looking for for a migration. And again, this is what we have off the shelf uh, based on the discussions, uh, Sonny, uh, me, we have with you after the webinar for your migration. We can probably pick and choose and create a customized uh, you know, offering for you. So that's number one on the migration services. Uh, the next one, uh, Sunny, if you could go to the next slide, please, is regarding our managed services, right? Perfect, thanks. So this is regarding the uh, the managed services. So again, like you know, Chetan mentioned, we are uh, part of an elite uh, group of AWS partners who are audited and authorized managed service providers. So again, we've uh, based on all our engagements for managed uh, services. On the left hand side, you've got the what you know components are involved in a managed services, right? And then again, you can pick and choose. So based on our experience, we've broken them down into three tiers, uh, basic, advanced, and premium, and the cost for that. So again, you can have see, you know, depending, let's say, uh, for all the people who are already on AWS, and you're looking for someone to come and manage your services end-to-end -end responsibility, right? So this is what we do. And uh, depending on where your workload lies and what is your expectation, you can see whether you fit in a basic, advanced, or premium. And then again, you know, we can go to a fourth customized uh, template for you based on, you can probably pick and choose and, you know, have it a sort of on a, an a la carte version and we can create that cost and that services for you. So those are two interesting offers. And again, uh, uh, proud to be launching them today as part of everyone uh, on the call. Right, uh, again, uh, just reiterating what, you know, Sony went through. So uh, as as our thanks to all of you for uh, joining the webinar today, uh, we've got some good offerings, uh, you know, uh, uh, that we can do for you. Number one is doing a complimentary POC, again, like Chetan said, right? So a lot of our customers and probably many of you are looking to explore uh, services like, you know, uh, machine learning or AI, or data analytics to solve some business problems. So let's have a discussion. Uh, let us work with you and you know work on a complementary uh, proof of concept to, for you. Uh, work on those services. Uh, we can offer great discounts on CloudFront. So CloudFront is is the industry leading uh, content delivery network by AWS with multiple, I uh, think, a couple of thousand uh, points of presence globally. So again, we can offer some good discounts for you without any commitment. Uh, being a well after review partner, again, for everyone who is currently on AWS, uh, reach out to us, let us do a review of your architecture and see how it stands to the, uh, to the best practices and we'll help you fix those uh, gaps as well. And lastly, uh, you know, complimentary consulting on cost optimization. So again, I'll be happy to have a discussion with you, uh, you know, wherever uh, required to help how and, you know, the areas where we can help uh, reduce your uh, cost and you know whether any leakages or any ways of optimizing your current consumption on AWS. Sorry. All right, so um, we have uh, a number of questions that have uh, come across from the attendees. So three, I think one of them, uh, Jetan's already answered in the chat, but I'll just cover it. So. Um, the first one, uh, so two on migration, really. So the first one is, how do we estimate the overall migration and ensure it matches our current spend? So I guess it's, you know, how do we ensure they don't go over budget or, you know, that migration is delivered to time and to budget, I guess, is yeah. the question, yeah? Yeah, I can take that up, sorry. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a good uh, question, right? I mean, that's, that's usually the uh, initial step of, of a uh, cloud adoption, uh, trying to understand whether cloud really fits to your existing uh, uh, business model budget and matches to your current IT spend. So if you look at uh, AWS uh, migration uh, methodology, uh, we uh, recommend a three-phase methodology. And the first phase is the assets phase, right? Which uh, Saurabh also touched upon. Uh, so in the assets phase, uh, we just look at your uh, current inventory of uh, the kind of uh, instances and the environments that you have, the licensing, uh, 
uh, that you have right and try to map them to the cloud uh, to come up with a uh, uh, full fledged uh, cost of bringing over those resources uh, with optimization and right sizing on the cloud uh, the second part is we also look at uh, other costs right uh, what is your uh, operational overhead cost what is your uh, uh, overhead in running the data center uh, in trying to manage the, the licensing uh, yourself right uh, so all those kind of other costs are also considered and of course all the experienced partners like uh, uh, mind and other migration partners are aware of the methodologies to come up with the right formula to identify those metrics as well uh, and they help to put together a good uh, business case at the end of the day uh, even before you start moving any server to the cloud right so that's that's the first phase uh, where they kind of build a directional business case uh, with a tco for either three years or five years uh, showing you how exactly your uh, spend uh, lines up uh, what is your roi going to be uh, they also help you chart out some uh, uh, intangible uh, or uh, non measurable benefits as well like bringing agility to your business trying to address certain problem areas with your customers uh, uh, which cloud can resolve for you right uh, so the assessment uh, is is the key phase part of it uh, to identify uh, how the costs line up great thanks so and the second uh, migration question was which you've already answered in the chat but i'll just go over it was specifically around migrating uh, databases uh, and Oracle databases from on-prem to the AWS cloud and around using these existing licenses or is there any change in the licensing model? And uh, you've answered in the chat essentially that uh, existing licenses can be used on Amazon EC2 um, and you've provided a link. So um, please refer to the chat for that link. Um, however, we're more than happy to kind of engage, understand your exact licenses in play and uh, what you're looking to do uh, in terms of migration to the cloud and we can help you navigate um, the licensing and AWS requirements. Right. And the last question, which I'll give over to Saurabh, which is on um, the well-architected review. Um, and the question is, how long does a well-architected review take and who needs to take part in it? So I guess that means you know, who in the organization, the business, uh, yeah. It needs to be part of the well-architected review when mm -hmm. engaging AWS and or a partner. Sure, yeah. So, uh, a well so the, the entire process of the well-architected review is broken into three parts. The first one is the assessment, where you know uh, where we need most of the time from you as an organization is about four hours. That we need from your team and who I believe the question is who needs to be part of it, right? So again. Uh, the decision makers and the architects who are working on those applications who can answer questions, uh, you know, regarding the, the AWS workload, those are required. And again, the time investment from the customer and the organization uh, from you is about four hours. Uh, so that's the first part of the well architected review. The second one is actually, you know, doing uh, an analysis and taking out a report. That takes about uh, a couple of days, two or three days, and then depending on uh, the review, what are the gaps, right? So there are a number of gaps, uh, we'll fix them for you. And to fix those apps, it takes uh, between, you know, uh, one to two weeks. So the entire war activity uh, is, is about uh, three to four weeks in whole. And uh, the, uh, the time investment required from the customer and the organization is about four hours. Okay, great. Thanks, uh, Saurabh. Um, just, I'll just check the chat one last time to see if there's any more questions. Okay, so um, no other questions from uh, anyone. So um, based on that, um, I'd like to, uh, I'm displaying mine and Saurabh's uh, contact details now. So if you would like to take part in any of those uh, offers that we displayed earlier, uh, please uh, make contact with myself or Saurabh, either via email address or we're both on, like everyone else on LinkedIn. So um, yeah, find us on LinkedIn. Um, and I would like to thank everyone for their um, participation in this event. And uh, thank you, Sora Ben Chetan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you.